If you hear like noise in the background, it is currently pouring outside, so you might be able to hear it, you might not, but it is an improvement from my neighbor's power washing the driveway all freaking day. It's three o'clock and I've been waiting since nine to film this video, so thank you mother nature. It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my July wrap up for 2023. I read a total of 14 books so I will be splitting this up into two parts. I don't think I ever actually hit a five stars but there were a couple 4.5 and a couple four stars. A lot of three stars so it is what it is but without further ado let us get started. The first book I have is A Crooked Mark by Linda Cow, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Matt and his father who believe that when a soul is about to pass over, Lucifer can actually mark it and send it back to Earth to do it his evil bidding. For years, Matt has been part of The Sweepers, which is like an organization that follows, hunts, and exterminates the marked by burning them alive. He has been following his father from town to town while he works for the sweepers, but he is finally tasked with his first solo mission. He must follow and eliminate a girl named Rachel who was marked after a car crash that killed her father. Matt thinks that this is going to be very easy, but then he starts spending more time with Rachel and he quickly realizes that he's starting to fall for her. I enjoyed this book for the most part. I do think it was entertaining while I was reading it, but I don't think it was anything particularly memorable. I liked Matt for the most part, but his going back and forth between believing and not believing that Ray was marked kind of got old pretty quickly. His constant whining about not ha wanting to hunt Ray got very annoying because it was very easy for him to just be like, I don't want to hunt her anymore and then move on. I get like there was consequences, but like, I just, I didn't, I didn't care for it. I was actually originally going to give this a two stars, but the final twist kind of bumped it up for me because I went in a direction that I definitely wasn't expecting, so I ended up bumping it up to a three out of five stars. The next book that I have is Threads That Bind. This is by Kita Hazapolu. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one was really good. This follows the Aura sisters who are Etherborn, which means that they are descendants of the Fates. Io, the youngest sister, is a cutter, which means that she has the ability to cut people's threads. Her older sister, Thaya, has the ability to weave threads, while her middle sister, Ava, has the ability to draw them. Io uses her abilities in her private investigation business, but then one day on the job, it ends in a wraith murdering an innocent person. That same night, her path crosses with Eddie, who is very close with Bianca, the queen of the mobs. Io discovers that she actually has a fate thread that connects with Eddie, but she doesn't want to tell him. She then begins to work with Eddie in order to discover why these wraiths are wandering the town and how to stop them. Okay, first off, I just want to say take in this cover. It is so gorgeous, and I wish that I owned the physical copy just so I could stare at it on my shelf all day. I read this in one sitting because I was so invested in this story. I found it to be so interesting. I'm a big fan of Greek mythology, and it was so interwoven with the magic system in this. I was so intrigued. Right from the very first page, I was instantly drawn into this world, the magic system, and these characters. I will say that it is very info dumpy throughout the entire story, but I do think that it is worth it in the end for the outcome of the book. I fell in love with every single one of these characters. They are each so unique and interesting to learn more about. I thought that Io was a really fun main character to follow. I was so invested in her story. I also think that the complicated dynamics and relationships between the three sisters was so complex. I could not get enough of it. I really liked Eddie. I think that he was very sweet, but he also had a rougher side that we also got to see. I really liked how he was Io's fate thread and how she tried to avoid him for years, and yet fate brought them back together. The fact that they had to reluctantly work together to save the city was also a bonus for me, one of my favorite tropes. I also really liked Bianca. I could not decide whether I wanted to be her or date her at any given point of the story. I just thought she was so cool. You are left on such a huge cliffhanger. I'm very sad that I'm going to have to wait for the next book because I need it in my hands right now. I loved it. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Definitely pick it up if you haven't already. I think it's super underrated. I haven't seen anybody talk about it, but I really want to talk about it, so somebody else needs to read it, please. 
Next I have Sunshine Nails. This is by Maya Nugan and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows the Tran family who own a nail salon in Toronto. A very bougie nail salon ends up opening right across the street from them and kind of starts taking their customers away from them. As time progresses and people start floating over to this new nail salon, each family member kind of takes matters into their own hands on how they are going to save the shop and it's kind of the story of that. This was a very quick read. I really enjoyed my time reading it. It's a very character driven story. I really liked the multiple point of views in this and learning more about each of the Tran family. Each family had their own issues and problems that they were trying to deal with while also trying to save the shop. Honestly, a lot of the time they had me giggling, which a lot of it was not entirely funny, but they just handled it so interestingly. If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about, but you couldn't help rooting for them and hoping that whatever was going on resolved very quickly. They definitely made some pretty questionable decisions and did some very silly things, which had me shaking my head a lot of the time, but I was rooting for them till the very end. The book explores gentrification and the immigrant experience. I actually listened to it on audiobook and personally I think that that was the best way to experience this book. Each family member had their own narrator which definitely brought the characters to life for me. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this character-driven story. They were so unique and fun to get to know. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Give Me a Sign by Anna Sortino. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows 17-year-old Lila, who is deaf, but she's never felt deaf enough. When she was younger, she attended Camp Grey Wolf, which was a summer camp for the deaf and blind. She decides that she is going to apply to be a junior counselor this summer, even though she doesn't know a lot of ASL. Her application is accepted and she returns to the summer camp and she is reunited with an old friend named Isaac and it's kind of their story. I liked this. I think that it was a very cute story with pretty good deaf representation. I listened to it on audiobook and I really liked that when Lila didn't hear something, the audio would also muffle so it was kind of like what she would be hearing. I really liked the summer camp setting. It's one of my favorite settings to read about. I really loved how Lila finally felt like she was enough and found a place in her community. The slow burn friends to lovers relationship was really cute to see unfold. I will say that I do think that it became preachy at times but it wasn't too bad. It also handled some deeper topics that I hadn't exactly been expecting from this story and I think that they were done pretty well. I think that this would be a great read if you're going summer camping or to like a cottage. It would be a good option for you to bring along with you and yeah, I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Bellwoods Game by Celia Crampion and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows a Bailey and her peers who live in a town where a young Abigail Snook entered the woods one night in 1982 and it never returned. Years later, three sixth graders of Fall Hollow participate in the Bellwoods Games, which is an elaborate game where the participants need to ring a bell before the spirit of Abigail snatches them up. Social outcast Bailey has researched the game for a little while and is determined to win and it's like the story of that. The cover of this is what drew me in. I thought it was a very quick and spooky middle grade read. There's illustrations sprinkled throughout the story which I thought really enhanced it. I think that the story of Abigail was very intriguing and I wanted to know more about her backstory and the legend behind her. I really liked the message of fear, friendship, and forgiveness in this. Overall, I do think that it was a great middle grade to pick up around Halloween time. It just, it gave the vibes, you know? So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is Brazen by Julia Hart. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It's the memoir of Julia Hart who escaped the orthodox Jewish lifestyle and became a shoe and fashion designer. I actually decided to pick this up after I watched the Netflix series My Unorthodox Life where she talked about the book a lot during the first season so I was intrigued by it, wanted to know if I would enjoy it because I did really like the Netflix series. I listened to this on audiobook and Julia was the narrator which I think is definitely the way to read this. I recognized a lot of what she talked about in the first half of the book from the show but the second half of the book I wasn't really familiar with so that was the part that I was more interested in. I think if you hadn't watched the show before picking this up it would get very 
confusing very quickly. I think that it became very repetitive very quickly. I mean, the audiobook was 19 hours long, and it definitely did not need to be 19 hours. A lot of it could have been cut out, and you would have gotten the same story. It also ends quite abruptly, which glossed over a lot of the stuff that I wanted to know more about. I think it was a good addition if you have seen the Netflix series to know more about Julia if you're interested, but if you are not familiar with her, like, I'd probably skip it if I were you, but I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It was what it was, but very repetitive. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about is a graphic novel called Hoops by Matt Taveras. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows a group of girls in 1975 who attend Wilkinson High School. They end up becoming the first ever female basketball team there and they quickly realize the inequalities between them versus the boys basketball team so they decide to voice their concerns but as their success rises so do their voices and it's kind of the story about how they they fight for equality in the sport world. This was an extremely fast graphic novel. I finished it in about half an hour. It's a middle grade, so there aren't a lot of words in it. It's mostly pictures. The author's note was my favorite part of this book because it talks about how the three main characters, Cindy, Lisa, and Judy, are actually based off of real people, and the story is loosely based off of what happened to them. I really like the overall message of the inequality that women face in sports in comparison to their male counterparts, and I really liked how by the end of the story the equality was looking up a little bit. I mean, it's still not great in the real world, but in this story it got better. I think that the colors were very vibrant and it was very easy to follow. I do think that it would be a great pick for a middle grader who is getting into graphic novels. I definitely wasn't the target audience, but it was a cute little story regardless, so 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first 7 books that I read for the month of July 2023. I read a total of 14 books, so if you are interested in the other 7 that I read, I will leave that link down below for you to check out once it is uploaded. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!